It's just that most people just close their eyes and refuse to see, you know, what was obvious to, to me or Michael Berry or a few other people could see it. Uh, and the same thing is happening again today. I mean, the bubble that we have now is actually larger than the one that popped in 2007, 2008. But the same people who couldn't see that bubble don't see this one. And they're gonna be just as blindsided by the events that are going to unfold. And you know, these are not like black swans, right? These are ordinary uh, white swans. It's just that you know, people don't want to recognize the problems. And the, the people who didn't see the 2008 financial crisis coming, they didn't see it coming because they didn't understand the nature of the problem. They didn't understand how Fed policy had created the problem. And it's the same Fed policy that created the bubble in in housing that has created the bubble we've got now. And everything the Federal Reserve did following the 2008 financial crisis to get us out of the crisis just laid the stage for the crisis that's coming, which is going to be much worse because the, the mainstream Wall Street people still don't get that the Fed didn't solve a problem that the market caused. The Fed caused the problem and then prevented the market from solving it by making it worse. And so now uh, the ultimate consequences that we're going to have to deal with in this coming financial crisis will be much worse than the, 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 you know, what we would have had to deal with back in 08, 09 had the Fed not intervened and let the market try to repair the damage that the Fed created. Well, you already have a big gap between how home prices and affordability based on the six and a half percent mortgage because the housing market we have now the prices were built on a foundation of three and a half percent mortgages not six and a half percent and there's a big difference in the monthly payments when you're looking at you know that higher rate plus it's not just the mortgage payments that have gone up look at the cost of homeowners insurance those premiums have skyrocketed as well also other costs that homeowners have to bear uh, in maintenance property taxes, everything about home ownership is a lot more expensive now than it was a few years ago. So the only way to make home ownership affordable for a new buyer is for prices to come down. But the problem when you see a big drop in real estate prices is now you blow up the collateral behind the existing mortgages. And now homeowners don't have the incentive to make their payments when they're underwater on their mortgage, and so they may stop. The only thing that may incentivize people to keep making payments is if they have a 30-year fixed rate loan that they locked in, you know, in the threes, uh, they may not want to give that up. Even though the house itself has no equity, the, the, their, their mortgage payment is still low, maybe relative to rent. But if the house starts to have problems you know, that need a lot of you know, expenses, a lot of money, uh, they may not want to do that when they're, you know, putting money into the pocket of the bank because they have negative equity in their home. Because, you know, when you own a home, you can't sell it with the mortgage attached. The new buyer can't assume your mortgage. The buyer has to look at a six and a half percent or maybe in the, in the near future, seven or eight percent mortgage. And that means that they can't pay nearly as much for the house as what you paid if they have similar means. Well, they may hike 50 at the next meeting, I think that's still a, you know, low probability. They will hike at least 25. That's pretty much baked in the cake. But even then, even if they hiked 50, that would leave the Fed funds rate at five. And even if you believe the government inflation numbers, which I don't, the year over year CPI increase is more than five. I mean, even the PCE which is an even less accurate way to measure inflation than the CPI, even that is a year over year increase of higher than five. So that means even at 5%, you're looking at negative real interest rates. You can't really fight inflation with negative real interest rates. You need positive real interest rates. You need interest rates that are above the rate of inflation. And we don't have that. And we're not gonna get that because we can't afford it. And also, in order to really bring down inflation, you need to see a contraction in credit, and we're not seeing that. We're seeing credit expanding. We have record high credit card debt and record low savings rates. So consumers have not altered their behavior 
as a result of the Fed rate hikes. They're not saving more and borrowing less. They're saving less and borrowing more. And they continue to spend everything they earn and then some. And that puts upward pressure on prices. And the U.S. government has not cut spending, which is what would be required to fight inflation. Spending is increasing. And so are the deficits necessary to finance it, which puts a lot of pressure on inflation upwards because now the central banks ultimately will have to do a about phase on QE and go back to quantitative easing uh, in order to uh, finance these deficits. Otherwise, long-term interest rates could explode higher if the government needs to finance the debt privately. And you know, a lot of people don't realize how difficult it is right, to get that inflation genie back in the bottle. You know, there's a reason for that expression because people learn the hard, hard way. You don't want to let that genie out of the bottle. You know, you go back to the 1970s when we had high inflation. Volcker came in 1980 and, and tried to, you know, put that genie back in the bottle. The Fed never achieved a 2% CPI until 1986. That was six years later by the time the inflation got down to two. And in 1986, you had a Fed funds rate hit a high, I think, of 16% in 1982. Well, we're, we're not even at five yet. So if it took 16% back then to get the inflation rate down to two, and it's not like it stayed at two, the Fed got to a 2% inflation in 1986, and then it took 12 years to do it again. All the years between then were way above 2%. So now you have Powell saying, oh, we're gonna get inflation back down to 2% and keep it there. Good luck. I mean, the only time the Fed ever achieved multiple years of 2% or lower inflation was during the years that immediately followed the 2008 financial crisis. And those were flukes. And it, this is part of the, uh, the irony of it. When the Fed lowered interest rates to zero, which was creating inflation, that actually helped push down the CPI because interest is a big cost for everybody. Businesses have interest costs. That's like their raw material costs or their labor costs. And so as interest rates went down for businesses, they were able to pass on the savings to their customers. And so prices were lower because interest rates were, were lower. Also, uh, home ownership, which is a third of the CPI, owner's equivalent rent, that was suppressed by the low interest rates, which kept the lid on mortgage rates, which also kept a lid on rents because you know people compete, you can rent or you can buy. And because mortgage rates were so low, that also helped keep rents low. Well, now rents are rising, mortgage rates are rising, businesses are having to deal with rising interest rates, and so they're passing that on in the form of higher prices. So paradoxically, what the Fed is actually doing now is making the CPI work higher. It's making it a bigger number because it's actually raising prices. Um, and, and, and so there's no chance that we're gonna get back to 2%. You know, that, that, that's in the history books. That, those years were an aberration because everything the Fed did to temporarily suppress the CPI back then is now catching up to us and it's all gonna push up the CPI. Plus in the meantime, we have massive amounts of money printing that has taken place. Um, so, you know, we're, we're not gonna see 2%. We're probably not even gonna see 4%. I mean, the inflation rates will be north of that. And that's even with the fact that the CPI isn't even capturing the real degree to which prices are rising. And that's by design. I, I, the way I usually look at it is whatever the CPI is, just double it. And that's closer to what's actually happening. So if the government says eight, it's probably 16.